Hi there, this is Shubham Mittal from DecipherTechnic.com. Today we are going to review the basic signal processing concepts necessary for studying the digital signal processing. So for the first few lectures, I will be reviewing the signal processing concepts. Let's start with the signal. A signal is defined as any physical quantity that varies with time, space, etc. such variables. So any physical quantity which is dependent on an independent variable may be termed as a signal. Mathematically, a signal is defined as a function of one or more independent variables. Example, st is equal to 5t square plus 2t plus 3 or maybe gx. This function depends on x. gx is equal to 17x plus 2. Okay. Next, the system. The system is any entity that processes a set of signals. It may be a signal or maybe one or more signals. So it yields another set of signals. <coughs> we may visualize a system like this. Here we feed some set of signals and we get another set of signals. Let's say I input xt, I get yt. So the functionality may be defined by the system inside this box and the system may be made up of physical components as in electrical, hydraulic or mechanical. So that will be the hardware realization or the system may be a simply a software realization where we may be implementing the algorithm for the realization of the system that computes an output from an input signal. Like we may be implementing some function inside MATLAB which takes on the input signals and output some signals. With, in concern with this course, we will be dealing with signals as a function of time only. So in the further study, we will be de dealing with time dependent signals. Next, what is the classification of signal? The signals may be classified into four categories, continuous valued, discrete valued, continuous time, discrete time. Continuous valued signals take continuous amplitude over this range. Like I may define the signal xt taking on the values between 0 and 5.0 volt. So the signal may take the entire continuum of this range. So it may take 1.5, 1.75, 1.952, 2.05. .05. These signal amplitudes may be continuous. Okay. Discrete valued signal takes discrete amplitudes. It means the signal can take only the discrete amplitudes. It is taking 1, 1 volt, 2 volt, 3 volt or maybe 4 volt. Only few discretized amplitudes are allowed for the signal. Continuous time signal is the valued function for continuum of time. So such signal is defined for every value of t. t is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.625. For every value, I have the signal value. OK, so this is the continuous time signal. Discrete time signal is the function for which the value exists only at discrete instants. So between 0 and 1, the function is simply undefined. It is not 0. The signal is undefined between 0 and 1. Likewise, between 1 and 2, it is un undefined. So we are having the signal amplitudes defined only for instance 0, 1, 2, that likewise. So this is a discrete time signal. It is dependent on the n. n is the instant. The signal can be random or deterministic. A deterministic signal can be expressed by an explicit mathematical expression. The past, present and future values of such a signal are unambiguously known. Which means I can define a simple equation for the function. I can define a simple equation for the function so that whenever I plug the values of t, I get the specific unambiguous value because it is a function for a single value it should lead to a single output so 
the value should be unique so like if i am concerned with the past value t is equal to minus 2 xt will evaluate to this based on this function 4 okay at t is equal to 0 that is the present value is the 0 and the future value at second instant let's say t is equal to 2 second we get the value 36 what is random signal random signal is a signal that cannot be described accurately by explicit mathematical formulation or such a description is too complicated to be of any practical usage for example the speed signal waveform speed signal waveform can be expressed as a summation of finite time varying sinusoids so it can be expressed as time varying amplitude then time varying frequency as well as phase so where AIT, FIT and theta IT are the sets of possibly time varying amplitudes, frequencies and phases of the respective sonicides. But such mathematical formulation is too complicated to deal with because as we will see in the first further course, we can't process it very much and uh, equations involved for solving or taking out some characteristics out of such formulations will be too computationally demanding okay on the real world such signals in evolve in time in such an unpredictable manner and hence termed as random signals so this randomness is the case of information in the signal itself next we consider the dimensionality of the signal what is the dimensionality of the signal which means whether the signal is dependent on a single variable that will be called a signal single dimensional signal like x is a voltage waveform which depends on the time so this is a single dimensional signal xt the multi-dimensional signal depends on two or more variables two or more independent variables like this image image intensity i x y depends on the coordinates x and y x is the vertical coordinate and y is the horizontal coordinate that x represents the row number and y represents the column number so image intensity is dependent upon both these values x and y we will be having different pixel values at different points so this is the 2D space and this is the 1D space. So it is simply 1D space and a higher dimensional space. Okay. Next is single versus multi-channel signals. A single channel signal is simply a single signal which may be dependent on one or more variables like I can term this image, this image IXY as single channel provided the signal is single valued upon this X and Y which means this includes grayscale images and black and white images but we can't include the color image because color image will be having three planes as you will see later the image can have three planes so RGB this image will be multi-channel sig signal. Why? Because R channel is a sing S1 channel S1 signal, G is the S2 signal, and B is the S3 signal. So I can make a vector out of it. ST is equal to S1 T, S2 T, and S3 T. This will be a vector. So such signals are called multi-channel signals. Like this is another example, S1T can be 2T plus 1, S2T is equal to 5T plus 6, S3T is equal to 2T plus 5. Then I can make a vector out of it to make a 3-channel three signal. Another other example would be ECT signal. ECT signal consists of various signals, typically 3 or 12 from probes. This was the simple review for the first session. I'll be resuming it.
in the next video thank you